Hello, my name is Stephen Mayu, and this is my video series on practical JavaScript, where I walk you through the algorithm challenges at freecodecamp.com. In this video, we're going to tackle the first advanced challenge, validate US phone numbers. Um, so I've got my new JavaScript file uh, already created, and uh, I made a new directory for all of the advanced challenges. And of course, I went ahead and I put that um, uh, JavaScript file on line 11 of my example.html file, uh, as I normally do. So uh, anyway, let's jump into the challenge and understand what we have to do. Um, return true if the past string is a valid US phone number. Um, and these are all of the different uh, possible formats that um, that should pass. So you can see um, uh, you have some some numbers with dashes, some numbers with parentheses, others with a space or a dash, uh, only spaces. This one is just ten digits. Um, so you see, you know, different formats here. Basically, your job is to validate or reject the U.S. number based on any of the combinations of formats provided above. The area code is required, and if you're not from the United States, um, and if you're you know not familiar with American numbers, the area code is the first three digits, and sometimes it's wrapped in parentheses. Okay, sometimes not, but the first three digits uh, is um, is the area code. Uh, the country code is optional, but if there is a country code, it has to be the number one because one is the country code for the United States. So um, if the provided string uh, matches the uh, valid patterns, you're going to return true. Otherwise, you're going to return false. And um, in order to you know, make this challenge work for us, we have to use regular expressions. There's just no way around it. Um, if you have no idea about regular expressions, stop this video, go to a couple of websites and find um, and just you know run through some of the tutorials um, and once you know the basics then come back here watch the video uh, we need to use regular expressions and we're going to use this regular expressions method called test so um, we create a regular expression we can store it in a variable we call test on it and then we put in a string as an argument and if the string uh, matches the pattern of the regular expression it returns true otherwise it returns false and that's exactly what we need. So uh, definitely go ahead and read the documentation for that. Um, in the real world, I probably wouldn't uh, build something like this uh, on my own um, because you know validating your numbers, email addresses, you know things like that. There's so many use uh, or there's so many edge cases. You know different variations of patterns. It can get really complicated and messy very quickly. Uh, in the real world, I would probably use a professional, you know, third-party library. This one, it's uh, you know made by Google. It has support for different programming languages, and um, what it does is it parses, formats, and validates international phone numbers. So not just American numbers, but numbers from all around the world. Um, and it was created by the folks at Google, so it's got to be pretty darn good. Um, anyway, uh, we, we're not going to use that the library for, for this challenge. We have to you know, build it ourselves and, and pass all of the tests at freecodecamp.com. Um, but that's okay. Uh, we're going to try our best and, um, and just you know, hopefully learn from this experience. Um, now, when, when I'm uh, you know, doing a lot of work with regular expressions, I use this website here. It's called rejectsr or rejectsr.com. So that's uh, R E G. EXR.com and it's pretty cool. You can put in some text and then up here you can write your regular expression pattern and it will actually highlight um, you know, everything that passes. So uh, just to give you an idea, uh, this is the regular expression that we're going to build and I'll walk, it, uh, walk you through it uh, step by step. And these are all of the valid um, numbers. Um, uh, that that uh, that should return true, and as you can see, it's all highlighted in blue, um, and it's pretty cool. Um, it, it tells you, you know, exactly, you know, um, it, if you highlight over the rules here, it tells you exactly, you know, what that chunk of code means. 
Um, and then these are all of the invalid formats uh, that shouldn't pass, and uh, and we know that it um, that this regular expression would work because because look at it, uh, nothing is highlighted in blue, um, so that means that it doesn't match. Um, so we're going to use this to help us, you know, kind of visually, you know, uh, see, you know, what our patterns match and what they don't match. So you know, that's very cool. And then, you know, later on, you, you can just kind of experiment with it. So what would happen if you deleted that character? You know, what would happen if you deleted this one? You can see um, it, it kind of screws everything up um, if we deleted those, you know, little characters. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, delete all of this. I'll walk you through the pattern. Um, I wrote this pattern, I did this test like 10 months ago, like nearly a year ago, and since then, um, uh, Free Code Camp added more tests. Uh, so my old code, it, it passed like everything except for you know two of these tests. So um, just for the sake of clarity and uh, for the sake of simplicity, I'm kind of adapting my old solution to some of the solutions I found uh, on the internet. and. Um, so anyway, um, uh, that's what I'm going to be showing you. It's not entirely my solution. Um, one more thing before we get started. Uh, make sure that global and multi-line are checked in these expression flags. You should have a GM right here. Um, if you don't check those, it's just not going to you know, highlight you know, everything. Um, it'll only highlight like the first example, and we don't want that. So uh, make sure G and M are both highlighted. Okay, so uh, let's get started. Um, I got my notes over here. Um, there's no way that I can remember this on my own. And, uh, and um, if I did it from scratch, um, there would be a whole lot of making mistakes and debugging. And I want to keep this video short, under 15 minutes if possible. So I'm going to be going back to my notes. Um, and that, that's what's happening here. So first thing I want to do is uh, I'm going to wrap my entire um, you know, pattern in this carrot. Uh, and dollar sign. Uh, the caret matches the pattern at the beginning of a string and the dollar sign matches uh, the pattern at the end of the string. So we, we need you know, these two things to, to make sure that, that everything is, is matching you know, how it should be matching. Um, so, so if you highlight it here it says matches the beginning of the string and here matches the end of the string. So we're going to wrap our entire um, entire expression like that. Um, you can even go back here. Um, so we have the string hello world and we got that carrot top. So it's it's asking us to test whether or not the string um, has hello at the beginning because we have this uh, carrot top right here. And sure enough it does. So um, so, so that's why you know, we need this. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and test first for an optional area code, or sorry, an optional um, in, uh, country code. So we're going to put that in a, um, in a capture group. Okay, one is the country code. We're, we're going to do a backslash S and put a question mark. So that means an optional space. And then I'm just going to put uh, everything around here with another question mark, and that just means this entire uh, uh, capture group is optional. So uh, essentially what this code means is one with or without a space is, is valid. Uh, so we can have the area code one with or without a space, and, and that's what this code um, right here uh, represents. Okay. So uh, now we need to take, uh, take care of the, um, we need to take care of the um, of the area code. Okay, the area code are those first three digits, and they can be wrapped in parentheses or not wrapped in parentheses. So let's go ahead and create another capture group, and um, I'm going to use an escaped character, so backslash and parentheses. So um, so I mean, normally we use parentheses for capture groups. So in order to test that in a string, we have to escape that character using a backslash. All right, so we got that escaped character. We're going to do a backslash D. That means digits, so 0 through 9. And the, the area code has three digits, so I'm going to put curly braces with the number 3 in them. So that means um, match three digits for the area code and nothing more. And then, of course, um, we need to... Um, 
we, we, you know, if we have an opening parentheses, we need a closing parentheses. So um, that, that's what we're doing right here. We're escaping the closing parentheses, and uh, and, and that will match um, uh, three digits, three numbers inside uh, of a of parentheses like this. Uh, but the parentheses are totally optional. So I'm going to use this pipe character, and that means or. So, so essentially what we're doing is match the area code with opening and closing parentheses or without opening and closing parentheses. So let's go ahead and do this. Um, okay, I'm going to say D for the digits, and three, and I'm just checking my notes right here, and okay, that looks good. Um, so I'm happy with that, and you can highlight it over here, and it tells you, like, this is one big capture group. Okay, so that's done. Uh, now, okay, um, we're gonna use the uh, square brackets, um, and basically square brackets, that just means uh, anything in this set. So match any character in the set, um, and so, Let's match any space, like one space, uh, or um, any dashes, and we have to escape the dash. Um, that's totally optional, too. Um, you know, we, we don't need spaces or dashes between our numbers, uh, so that's, that's totally optional uh, right there. Um, and then we need three numbers, through three digits here, okay, so digits, and put in a number three for that, okay. And then again with the um, with the dashes or space, says, oh, let's do another backslash there, and we'll make it optional, okay. So that should work. And then finally, um, we're gonna say uh, backslash D, and then do the final four digits, okay. So awesome, this works. Um, and, and you can kind of uh, you know, see right here, this is for the optional uh, country code with or without a space. This is uh, one big capture group and it uh, makes sure uh, that we have a area code, three digits. Um, and this first one is for um, uh, opening and closing parentheses or, and that's what this pipe is, uh, no parentheses at all. And then uh, after that, we have an optional, um, you know, something optional here, and, uh, and that would be um, you know, a, either a space or a dash, but, but we don't need a, a space or a dash um, between the numbers. Then we need three digits, okay, and that is required, so no question mark. Then another set of optional uh, space or dash is susceptible, and then four digits, and so that's why um, you know, these patterns, they all work, and then nothing from here is highlighted. Okay, so uh, I'm just gonna copy and paste this code into my editor now. So I'm gonna copy that, I'm gonna go here, and then I'm gonna create a variable called var regex. And uh, everything is gonna go in two forward slashes, a regular expression. So there it is right there. It looks uh, kind of funky, but that's totally okay. And uh, you might recall from the uh, website, we had that GM flag. Uh, we don't need that, so you know, forget about it. Just put a semicolon at the end of it. And then uh, I'm just gonna say return uh, rejects.test, pass in the string, and um, put a semicolon there. I'm gonna save it, and I should get a true um, for my example file. Let me. Let me open up the developer console, okay, the JavaScript console. Let me refresh. Oops, I know what I forgot to do. I forgot to put a console.log. Okay. Now try, I should get a true. Oh, I get a false. Oh, I think this is uh, not a valid format. Uh, let's try, let's see. 555, 555, 555, save that. Okay, okay I get it true, cool. Um, let me just double check that all of this works uh, at Free Code Camp's website, and if it does, awesome. Okay, let me just paste that in here, and then, 
There we go. Happy, happy, joy, joy. All right, great. So there's no way getting around it. You have to understand regular expressions a little bit, at least enough to understand, you know, what someone else's um, regular expression that you copy, what it's actually doing. All right, that's all the time that I have for this video. Questions, comments, or suggestions for improvement, please let me know in the comments below, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye. Boop.